I have a good book. And, and she said, Lord, I'm trying to, to learn this. And he said, I have a good book. And he's talking about the Bible. And, folks, it's, a, it's the greatest book, not one of the greatest, but the very greatest book. And I thank God for, you know, the different translations and, and the, the different, you know, it's translated into different languages. And I thank God for the King James Version and things. And I, I study after it and read after it and pray after it. And I saw the date, you know, studying after it. It says, when we're spiritually weak, we make bad decisions. How many times have we been away from God and we make decisions that cost us, that cost us an arm and a leg? A, a little story about Adam and Eve said, Adam said, I'm going to make you a woman, it's going to cost you. <laughs> and he said, it said, it's going to cost you. Uh, it's going to cost you a lot. I mean, it's going to cost you everything. He said, what can I <laughs> He says, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. There it is. I'm going to, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. And he says, what can I get for a rib? But, you know, but folks, when we are spiritually weak, we make bad decisions. Have we been pleasing to God this week? Do we know that he hears us when we pray? You know, to me, I, 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 I'm used to getting my prayers answered. There's people that, that pray and pray and pray, and they never seem to get an answer. But, but I'm here to declare today that God answers every prayer. It's yes, no, maybe, and wait. Every prayer he answers. And sometimes we don't like the result. But if we'll, if we'll, if we'll draw real close to God, we can hear him whisper in our ear what the answer is. And, and folks, we're not ready for some of the things that we ask for. And, and sometimes we ask for things and there's a, a great commitment goes with that. Sometimes we'll maybe want bigger houses or faster cars or prettier cars, but then there's a payment that comes with that, and that means that we may have to work, may have to work overtime, might have to, to miss the house of God to make payments. And folks, God, that, would that be God's will for your life? God wants you to be in his house every opportunity, every chance. And if we'll be in his house, we'll put God first. He says, put him first, and everything we have need of shall be added unto us. So it's important that we seek him first. The little word says, Separation. The enemy tries to get us off to herself. It says Jesus sent the disciples out two by two. Hardly ever will two be down at the same time. I don't know the times that Tina has lifted me up. I mean, Ted, there have been things I've went through and, and devils I've fallen. And if I hadn't had somebody there, then I might not be here today. So, you know, it's important that we, that we walk together. It's important, you know, as the evangelist me and Brother Mike Ferguson and, and Jimmy Smith, uh, you know, preaching this tent revival, we were walking together in harmony, and God has done great things. And also we had some teamwork, some of the singers and different ones coming in. But, but folks, you know, if one, it said one can chase a thousand, two can put ten thousand a flight, and three, it's untelling, you know, chase a million. And, but it's important that we walk together. It's important that there be a harmony among us. And, 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 you know, one can do great things, but just think how much two can and three can. So the enemy will separate us and says, you're all by yourself. Even Elijah became discouraged and says, I'm the only one. But when we know that we've got brothers and sisters that are praying for us. You know, the sister Edith Smith, years back, a few years ago, when she had taught my son Jamie in Sunday school, she says, you tell Jamie when you see him, I'm praying for him every day. Said he's uh, all the kids I had in Sunday school said I've got their name on a list and I call their name out before God every day. And folks, you know, a, a mighty woman like Edith Smith, a praying boy, that is, that is all right, ain't it? Her time to David, a time when David had lost everything, it says he became very discouraged. All the people wanted to kill him. And, uh, and, and they wanted to kill him, but it says he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You know, there's times that we might not have a friend <laughs> that's close by. But we can just remember how God, how God has brought us and how God has fed us and how God has protected us and times that he has healed us and times that he come by. When, when all are, had forsaken us, the Paul said, all have forsaken me. But, but can you imagine today, folks, when, when we get along with God and, and we begin to pray, and we begin to cry out to God that he lifts us up. 
I mean, uh, we'll not leave like, like we came in Jesus' name. It's important, talking about being strong in the Lord, it's important that we seek the face of God. It's important that we encourage ourselves. And, and you know, what better way than saying a song? What better way, you know, to Lonnie testifying last night and just began laughing. And there's a life of faith. Abraham had it. You know, there's a life of unbelief. But Abraham laughed in his heart that he's going to be a dad. Sarah's going to have a son. And, and you know, in the natural, he said he believed in hope against all, I mean, every natural reason that he believed in Almighty God that he would do what he said he would do. And he began to laugh. And folks, we need to laugh every now and then if we have to tell ourselves funny stuff. You know, laughter doeth good like a medicine. And I thank God for the ability to laugh, the confidence to laugh, even when the storms of life are raging. That little song, when the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When I've done the best I can, friends don't understand. The storms of life are raging, stand by me. To David, when he encouraged himself, then God restored all that he had lost. A little lady the other day, God gave a word that he would restore all that the enemy had taken away. Folks, can you imagine in my life the things that the enemy had stolen and, and, and took and, and, and held captive, different things that God restored all and more. I've got more than I ever had, but it's because that I love God. God bless you in the Lord. Amen.